Hi, everybody. My name is Uma Misha Newberry. I am the Interim Executive Director of uh, Women's March Global. Um, today, I am excited to be able to share this time with you in our second um, webinar for our mini course, The Law and Sexual Violence with our strategic partner, Equality Now. Um, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, this is the second webinar in our series for the law and sexual violence. And this is also the second action um, in the five months of action that we are doing to end violence against women. Um, as you all know, in our anniversary march in January 2019 this year, our focus was end violence against women. We put together a toolkit listing all of the different ways in which women experience violence. And every single month, what we are trying to do is really highlight some of the systemic issues in regards to um, regarding um, violence against women and the narratives um, around the violence that, that women experience. This month, we're working with Equality Now to really focus on the law and sexual violence. Um, we want you to be able to ask any questions that you have during this webinar. So please leave your questions in the chat box on Facebook um, uh, for Equality Now or for ourselves and we will get to them. Um, I am really pleased to have with me today Suad from Equality Now. She um, is the MENA Region uh, Coordinator and she's gonna be talking to us about sexual violence um, and the laws within the MENA Region. Um, I want to give a brief uh, kind of summary as to this mini course and what we're trying to do before I turn it over to Suad. Um, we are working with Equality Now for the month of March um, uh, for our second to five actions to end violence against women. This is a month long mini course on sexual violence, um, uh, sorry, on rape consent laws um, around the world. We're going to be putting a link in our Facebook live chat if you want to sign up for the mini course and receive course reminders and also a course summary um, on every Thursday, then please follow that link and add your name um, to the Google form so that you can be included in that separate mailing list. Um, every single Wednesday, we are going to be sitting down and talking with um, one of Equality Now's extensive um, network of experts and advocates. Um, and in doing so, we hope to really raise, raise awareness um, about the efforts to reform sexual violence laws mm -hmm. globally and the changes that still need to happen. So with that being said, um, I really want to just give a little bit of a summary of what was discussed last week. Last week, we sat down with uh, Jackie Hunt from Equality Now to really highlight uh, the rape law report that they have put out. And these are some of the statistics that Jackie shared with us, that 35% of women worldwide um, have experienced um, sexual intimate partner violence or non-partner violence. And just over one in 10 girls have experienced um, forced intercourse or forced sexual acts at some point in their lives. Um, and then this third step, every one is likely to have either survived or know someone who has survived sexual violence. And I think that is a, a, a statistic that is incredibly staggering and should really hit all of us really hard. I mean, that's, that is a difficult one um, to process. And this is partly the reason why we are doing this work. So I want to introduce um, Suad and uh, ask Suad to really talk about um, rape laws in the MENA region. But before we get to that, Suad, can you just introduce yourself and um, tell everybody a little bit about the work that you do? Yeah, I am uh, Suad Abu Daye and I work for Equality Now for the MENA region, Middle East, North Africa region as a consultant, as a, as an, a coordinator. Uh, we have been, of course, Equality Now is working uh, in, uh, with the four main domains. Uh, which is discrimination in law and sexual violence and and harmful practices and and uh, sex trafficking for women and girls and part of our work uh, for the in the MENA region in particular we we have been tackling the issue of rape laws where most of the countries in the Arab region until recently 
had and still do have articles that pardon rapists and perpetrators from punishment if they marry their victims in their penal codes, including, for in example, region. in Jordan, and, and, yeah, and in the region. <laughs> yes, in the region. Um, so uh, we have been campaigning uh, for uh, with local partners in both uh, Jordan, Lebanon, uh, Palestine, um, uh, and Bahrain to revoke uh, such discriminatory articles where you know rapists can just marry their their victims. Uh, so, for example, if I want to ex give an example for Jordan uh, in August 2017, after a long campaigning by local organizations, parliamentarians, and of course, the contribution of Equality Now, uh, the parliament uh, succeeded actually in repealing Article 308. Um, and, uh, and also uh, in the same time, uh, oh, in August also 2017, Lebanon has rebuilt Article 522. And recently in March uh, 2018, um, Palestine has repealed this law. Uh, so, um, and still we are, uh, still we have other countries that still have the same article uh, where we are trying really to push hard the governments and call on the on the parliamentarians to really revoke such discriminatory like in Iraq we have uh, a big campaign uh, in Iraq where we are calling the parliament to repeal article 398 of the Iraqi penal code and of course in Iraq in Kuwait for example article 182 in Bahrain article 353 Syria, uh, Libya, and Algeria still they have uh, one article that permits kidnapper to uh, to marry uh, the the victim. So uh, we have this uh, problem um, in 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 the Arab region, and it is really an article that violates women and the girls' rights to live in dignity and without uh, without being. Uh, uh, raped and um, and being also rewarded. I mean, the the, the rapists are rewarded for uh, raping the, these uh, women. So we have been um, uh, working very hard um, uh, with the civil society-led movements at regional and country level to effectively um, advocate for rape law reforms. And I think we have succeeded in certain countries, but now we will be still continuing to really uh, end this discrimination against uh, women uh, and, um, and girls. So uh, for example, if I want also to give another example that in, in 2014, we have been also campaigning with uh, women human uh, rights organizations in Morocco, where the parliament finally re repealed article 475 after actually a, a dramatic uh, incidents that Amina Al-Filali, a, a, a girl who has been raped by her rapist and then she decided to terminate her life. So she committed suicide and unfortunately she died. And after that, women and human rights organizations, they were calling the government and then the article was repealed. So we don't really want to see more girls die, you know, and then governments repeals or revokes these discriminatory laws. So I want. Um, so what I think it's important to for people to understand that Equality Now has is campaigning very actively within the MENA region to repeal these laws, and specifically these are articles within um, the 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 law um, laws within each of these countries that pardon rapists and perpetrators from punishment yeah. if they marry the victim. So they get off without any any charge, any um, repercussion. Um, you know, if they marry their victims. And the, the countries on this list that have a line through them that are striked out are countries where these laws have actually been repealed due to the exactly. quality now. Um, exactly. Important to, to point out. Um, so if you could take us through, Suad, the, the aims and, and the goals in, the, uh, in terms of the work that you're doing, that would be, that would be great. Yeah, I mean... Um... Of course, the core work of Equality Now actually is really to work with local partners, national organizations that really work on these issues. So our aims and goals is for a more connected and coordinate, 
coordinated civil society led movements at regional and country level to effectively uh, advocate for re law reforms and better connection between COs led advocacy initiatives and international committees and treaty bodies through respective uh, joint submissions. So in this aspect, we all the time, uh, along with our partners, whenever there is a country that comes up in front of any international treaty body like the or, or a committee like the CRC committee or the CEDAW committee, the human rights uh, committee, we try to, to inform these committees that these articles are still discriminatory against women and that the countries they have to uh, they have to uh, really work on repealing that and one of the very good examples that i can just bring is the crc committee uh, where where they really took our recommendations into consideration in regard to a submission that we have submitted uh, not uh, far uh, from uh, from these days uh, to the CRC committee in regard to Bahrain, and we have highlighted for the the CRC committee that still Bahrain they have the uh, three five three um, um, rape law uh, that needs to be re repealed, and of course among other issues like the nationality that the government of Bahrain also has to really work on amending the nationality law and also to raise the uh, age of marriage to 18. So uh, so we uh, we really uh, try to work with um, with uh, with these committees and I think uh, these committees are listening uh, to uh, to us and they they really try to ask uh, and the recommendations that we submitted to the committees they repeat them and put them in front of these uh, countries uh, when they come for review. Uh, so, so yeah. you you brought up um, Suad the uh, the fact that with the work that mm -hmm. Equality Now has been doing within the MENA region that there has been successful repeals of these rape consent mm -hmm. laws, and I want to point out the fact that this is also something that Jackie spoke about. These are these are laws that are in place, um, you know, currently within these countries that make it so much more difficult for women and girls to have access to justice. And this is why Equality yeah. Now is doing this work. So these are three cases on this on this um, slide. If you can talk about the work that yeah. was done within Morocco, Jordan, and Lebanon um, that, that, that you were able to do to, to repeal these laws. Yeah, I mean, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have been uh, trying to reach uh, and we have been successfully actually reaching local organizations, uh, local women human rights organizations who are working on the ground with victims of violence uh, and in particular with rape uh, victims. And we have been doing campaigns um, through calling on the governments and the parliaments to repeal such articles. And one of these examples in, in 2014 uh, Morocco uh, repealed Article 475 of the Moroccan Penal Code after, of course, sustained advocacy outcry by Equality Now and local women's groups. Uh, we, have, uh, we have issued uh, an action following the suicide of the Amina, Amina Filali, the 16 years old girl who swallowed poison after, uh, after uh, being forced to marry her rapist. So this is, as I mentioned, it's a sad story, but from Amina's case, the women's groups and us as Equality Now, we have been really cooperating to, to repeal uh, Article 475. And in 2014, uh, the parliament has uh, accepted and approved the repeal. So no longer, I mean, if, if a, a, a girl or a woman is raped, then the perpetrator will be um, sentenced to, uh, according to the penal code, without no exceptions uh, for um, uh, for um, marrying uh, the victim, because this article in Morocco has been repealed, Article uh, 475. In 2000, um, in two, and um, I have to say that uh, in 2016 and 2017. Equality Now uh, has, uh, has conducted two big uh, conferences and meetings in Jordan 
uh, where we brought where we uh, brought uh, civil society organizations from um, different countries in the region, including Bahrain, Kuwait, uh, Iraq, uh, Lebanon, of course, Jordan, uh, and Morocco, Egypt, uh, uh, along with parliamentarians, and we we succeeded in cooperating with. Uh, uh, Ms. Wafa Bani Mustafa, the president of the, uh, the MP Coalition to Combat Violence Against Women, which is uh, an uh, Arab uh, MPs, um, I mean, member of a female member of parliament, where uh, in these two conferences, we, we strategize on how you know, the relationship also between civil society uh, groups and parliamentarians should be more uh, tight and more in support of each other. Um, and after, I mean, I can't say that after these conferences that the repeal was there, but uh, there has been intensive work uh, by the parliamentarians um, uh, in Jordan, along with civil society organization and with the urgent alert that Equality Now has been um, working on along with local partners. Um, and finally, Article 308 uh, in, in, um, in the Penal Code of Jordan has been repealed and it was really something historical, especially that we know that uh, Jordan, uh, it's a little bit, uh, of very much patriarchal society. So the, we, we witnessed a very historical moment when the parliament decided really to repeal Article 308. And, mm -hmm. uh, and again, uh, we, we also campaigned with local uh, groups in, in Lebanon with the Lebanese councils to resist violence against women in Tripoli. And we issued um, a, 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 a full campaign where we highlighted a case study of a girl who has been raped and the suffering of this girl uh, and the importance of repealing for Article 522 uh, of the uh, Lebanese Penal Code. Uh, and of course, we, we, we were targeting parliamentarians and the president of uh, Lebanon to revoke this article. And, and in, in August 2017, the parliament decided to repeal this article. Uh, and I think the uh, contribution of the international uh, organizations, uh, including Equality Now, I mean, had, had its way in really uh, putting pressure on the government or, and the parliament of Lebanon to repeal such article. In regard uh, to uh, Lebanon in particular, I just want to highlight this this which is very important that the effect of article 5 to 2 is still uh, is still there in other articles so we are still continuing to work with local partners on repealing and amending the rest of the articles mm -hmm. which is 505 and uh, 519 and 518 from the penal code so the the struggle is continuing uh, and we are really hoping that um, that uh, these articles will be uh, repealed and amended. And of course, uh, uh, for Tunisia uh, in 2017, also Tunisia repealed Article 227 through um, um, endorsing the uh, family um, the uh, family violence against women bill, which through this bill, this article has been repealed. So no rapist is longer, you know, can marry uh, his victim. And in March, as I mentioned, in 2018, uh, Palestine repealed Article 308 of the Penal Code after so many submissions also that Equality Now joined forces with local groups in, in, uh, in Palestine, including Women's Center for Legal Aid and Counseling, which is a, a very feminist uh, non-governmental organization along with their, with their uh, coalition. Um, the president uh, of, uh, of Palestine uh, repealed Article 308. So we are having a very good, ex uh, good examples of are, uh, countries in the Arab region that have repealed this this uh, this law, uh, and we are uh, encouraging other actually countries to follow uh, the steps of these countries. 
Uh, for example, in Bahrain, uh, we are really uh, trying with local groups to highlight Article 353 uh, of the Bahraini uh, Penal Code. And of course, also for Kuwait, also we might have a, a campaign to, to, to really revoke Article 182. Thank you, Suad, for, uh, for going over the comprehensive scope of what's happening within the MENA region. I want to focus on this, this case study um, yeah. uh, that happened in Iraq. Um, yes. uh, and, and, you know, just the grave consequences and the reality for women and girls within the Arab region um, and what transpired in this case, if you can take us through that. Yeah, I mean, also uh, for Iraq, uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, as an outcome also of the two conferences that we have done uh, in Jordan and a follow up uh, convening in Tripoli uh, last year in October, um, Iraq, uh, in cooperation with the uh, women, uh, Baghdad Women Association, uh, we, we started to think about a campaign uh, to show the adverse impact of, uh, of this uh, article on women and girls. And, uh, and because Bahrain Women um, Association is, is providing legal uh, and social counseling for women and girls, uh, victims of violence, including rape. So we could have um, a case study of, of a girl. Of course, we, we named her Sabiha. It's not really her... A real name because we we preserve the confidentiality and the privacy of of the clients. So um, so Sabiha was saying that I couldn't accept the idea of having married my rapist and 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 uh, these words I mean these are the words of Sabiha who was 32 when she was raped by the guard at her work um, and of course after she has been raped under the pressure of her family and community, she married her rapist. And for four, five, for nine months, she endured rapes, trauma, isolation, and anxiety. And she was saying that I was under constant stress, unhappy, feeling disgust. I took every opportunity to, to initiate a fight with, with her rapist to leave me. So Sabiha, she got the divorce uh, after that, uh, but she she became more and more isolated within her family because her family they didn't really accept her uh, to come uh, as a divorced woman after being raped. So the community doesn't really help uh, most of the time in the Arab region these girls who 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 are facing and who are suffering from trauma from the rape. Uh, itself. So she was, after her divorce, she was prevented from going back to her work uh, and uh, she was confined uh, to home and <coughs> sorry and, um, and, and we, of course, uh, through our partners in Iraq, we knew that she was forced to marry um, a, another man um, 70 years old uh, with three children, some of them even her, her, yani, her same age and who treated her badly. So the fate of girls who, who, who are raped in the region is quite very harsh. Uh, they are re-victimized instead of supporting them, you know, and providing them with social, legal counseling and try to observe what, what they have been going through the, the pressure of the family and the pressure of the community. So this, this was unfortunately the, the, the fate of Sabiha. Uh, and the fate of Sabiha is also the fate of so many women and girls in the Arab region. I think so, it's incredibly important, um, Suad, that, that people understand, you know, that the, the work, like this is, Sabiha's case is one case, but there are so many more um, yeah, of, of these, these stories and at the same time there's so much work that you are doing um, with Equality Now um, and also with other coalition partners to highlight um, some of these issues and these are some of the, the images from your campaigns 
um, which yes. I think is really powerful. Um, can you talk a little bit about the work that you're doing with your with your partners? Yeah, I mean, um, um, in particular uh, for Iraq and uh, Lebanon, uh, uh, we uh, we really supported our partners to to highlight the importance of repealing uh, these discriminatory articles uh, through providing them with very small financial uh, support where for example in Iraq if if we can see they have done a play a uh, silent play uh, of uh, of a girl who is forced to marry her rapist but i don't think that it is seen um, where this guy is wearing this red uh, suit and um, at the back, in at the back, um, it is says um, uh, criminal article three nine eight, which means that he was rewarded for his crime by marrying this girl. So this play uh, has been performed in one of the most uh, important uh, and popular streets in Iraq, uh, and uh, also our partners they managed to put banners you know, for the community also and raise discussions uh, with the community about the importance of repealing Article 398. In addition, they have also uh, worked on, um, uh, they met with, um, with the so many um, uh, stakeholders, including parliamentarians um, and policymakers in order to shed the light on the importance of repealing article uh, through uh, article 398. So we had supported really uh, Bahrain Women, uh, uh, Baghdad Women Association in Iraq and Lukorwav, which is the Lebanese Council to Resist Violence Against Women in Lebanon towards the repeal of articles that pardon par rapists and perpetrators from punishment. Uh, and what they have done is that they they met with parliamentarians and policymakers, and uh, and um, I was very lucky uh, to be uh, in Lebanon in October, where uh, there was a meeting with the former prime minister of uh, of Lebanon, uh, Al Miqati, and who is now a member of the parliament. Uh, so I was lucky to meet with him along with Lukorwav and uh, and the national committee that supports the the repeal of of the other articles. So I was part of that, and uh, he was very furious that still these laws are existing. So we were very happy that he he promised to take this to the parliament when it is in session, and. Other things that we uh, we really supported our partners in trying to do raising awareness of the communities, training for journalists, law students, and civil society organizations on the importance of repealing discriminatory articles, and and to encourage also other countries from the region to advocate for the repeal, including Bahrain and Kuwait. That's why we we held this mini sort of. A strategic meeting in Tripoli uh, in October 2018, where we brought uh, uh, civil society organizations from Kuwait and from Bahrain to uh, exchange experience with Lukorwav and if, to exchange Lukorwav and uh, and the Bahrain Women uh, Baghdad Women Association about the steps that they have taken to repeal such discriminatory articles. And of course, we, don't we shouldn't forget the importance of the media and the social media, including Twitter, Facebook, to highlight the discussion. And, and the core, of course, work of Equality Now is to communicate also with the UN committee, including CEDAW committee, CRC committee, and the other committee, and ask these committees to draw the attention of governments on the issue. Mm -hmm. And and through also the actions and, you know, putting the stories, real stories of women who have been raped and action updates on the website to encourage members, you know, to also to put pressure on, on the governments and the parliaments to revoke such discriminatory articles. So, so if, if I just want to explain about the pictures, um, the first picture... Um, um, on the left, 
uh, where there is this girl who is sitting with, with a veil. Um, it says that don't, don't dream uh, to, uh, for marriage. Your punishment is imprisonment. You have to be in prison. So this is uh, the, the picture um, uh, from Lebanon, from Le Courroie. And the other picture is, uh, is the silent play that uh, um, Baghdad Women Association uh, has conducted, um, you know, in, in, in regard to repealing Article 398 of the Iraqi Penal Code. Thank you very much, uh, Suad, for taking us through all of that. And I think in terms of, um, you know, the the reforms that have happened, I think they have been incredible victories, but there's still so yes. much to be done, as you have uh, mentioned, in terms of the, the, the cases and the case study that we went through. Um, I think what, what is important for people to remember when we're talking about rape consent laws, these are laws that are actively in place within governments and within justice systems around the world that make yes, it so exactly. for women to actually gain justice when they have yeah. been, um, uh, um, when they have experienced sexual violence and or rape um, and when they are trying to find justice. I mean, there are so many barriers within that process for women to even seek out justice. And then you get to the legal system and there are still more barriers in place. So I think it's incredibly important that um, the work that Equality Now is doing to try to really remove those barriers and hold governments accountable Account. in amending laws so that men mm -hmm. can't just marry their rapist and all of their crimes are washed away, but they're, that they are actually held accountable is incredibly important to note. Um, so I want to take the time to uh, thank you for your expertise on this um, and the work that you're you're doing um, within the region and, and with Equality Now. If you want to follow Suad, um, th these are uh, all of the places where you can find her in terms of uh, Twitter, Facebook, um, Instagram, and then following Equality Now's work on their website as well. Um, I want to encourage all of you if you would like to continue joining us for this mini course, um, we will be uh, hosting another webinar um, next week, again with Equality Now on rape consent laws. I think this is an incredibly important topic. Um, Suha, thank you again for joining us. Thank you, Oma. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Join us next week.